Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2015 Ford Transit fan. This fan has a 3.5 liter engine in it and apparently this engine has an intermittent misfire that can occur cold, warm, or hot and it comes and goes. So what we want to do is we want to try to figure out what's happening with this engine. So the first thing we need to do is let's get into the DLC with a scan tool and gather some data so we can try to make a better diagnostic decision on what we're going to check. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've connected the e-scan to gather the data and we've got the engine running, let's go ahead and analyze some of the data. The first thing that I can see is bank one has good trim issues and bank two has a problem. Now I want you to notice that the bank to bank fuel trim is 14%. That's a lot of fuel trim bank to bank. It would make me think that there might be something wrong with one of the fuel injectors and that's what's causing the misfire. Usually when you have a large bank to bank trim, it has to do with fuel. But on some of these newer cars, you can have misfires that will skew the fuel trim and it's either mechanical or it's ignition. So either of those can give me a problem. So the next thing we can come down is I can see that I have low engine vacuum. So whatever's going on with this engine, I don't got a whole lot of vacuum. I also have had the codes cleared. Do you notice how I have no DTCs and no monitors of run? The shop that I'm doing the work for has cleared the codes. Now when you clear the codes, you're going to make it way harder to diagnose. Let me show you what I mean. When I come over to DTCs, I don't have any DTCs. They haven't been set because I'd have to go drive the car to get them back. So that makes it harder for me to diagnose it or for you to diagnose it. The next thing I want to do is I want to come over to mode 6. So we're going to select Ford for the mode 6 data. So we've got Ford, we're going to read it once. Now what I'm interested in right here is my misfires. Since the engine's misfiring, do you see how I've got cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? and I don't have any counts? Well that's because the codes have been cleared. We dumped all the data out of the mode 6. The mode 6 is the last test that's been run. So the car hasn't been driven enough after they cleared the codes to reset these. So either we're going to need to go drive the car to get some data and I just don't have time right now. So what I want to do is just diagnose the car to figure it out. In order to do this is what we're going to do is we're going to go and connect the scope up to the vehicle so we can scope this thing to figure out where our misfire is. One thing I caution you, don't clear codes until you fix the car. There's no reason to clear the codes if the car still has the problem, whatever problem it is. Clear the codes once the car is repaired and then you won't lose a lot of the data that's really important to diagnose the car with. So let's go ahead and get the scope connected to this engine. So we've got the scope and I've got it turned on, but now we need to connect the scope to this vehicle. So the first thing we always got to do is connect the ground to the negative side of the battery. Now the battery on this vehicle is not under the hood, so it looks like it's under the driver's seat. So let's go ahead and get the ground connected to this vehicle. On this vehicle, it's a little bit more complicated to get to the battery. I had to slide the seat forward, I had to take part of the stereo, the booster off, and the plate. But I have access to this battery. You always want to have your negative connection at the battery. Now once you've connected there, I know that my voltage drop testing will be accurate so I don't make any mistakes. So let's go get connected to the engine now. Now on this vehicle, the crank sensor is back behind the turbo. I can't get to the wiring, so I had to find the crank signal at the harness connection for the computer. So we've got the crank sensor connected here at the PCM. Here we've back probed the number one ignition coil. Now that will give us a signal so we can sync to this engine and figure out which cylinder is misfiring. 
Now that we have the eScope Elite 4 connected to this Ford Transit van, I want to check a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is go to meter. I want to make sure my leads are connected. Notice the red light is on for channel 3 and channel 4. That shows they're not connected, but the red light is off for channel 1 and channel 2. Channel 1 is connected to the crank sensor. Channel 2 is connected to the number 1 ignition coil. So we're ready to do the test now. So we want to go to tools. We want to pick a firing order on this guy's firing order. So we've got the firing order selected, for, which is 142536, and we're on trigger number one. So now since the vehicle is missing right now, we can go ahead and we can run this test. So we're going to start and run the test, and what we're waiting for is the data. The data says that cylinder five is my misfire. So cylinder five is, five is missing, and it says it's a steady miss, which I can feel. So now we need to find out why cylinder five is missing. So the first thing I want to do is the easiest, and that's to check the ignition coil for firing. So this is a COP type coil, so we're going to need to use an inductive pickup on the top of it. We'll use an ECOP on it, and we're going to make sure what's going on with the ignition. So let's go ahead and get the ECOP set up on this thing. Let me show you what we've done. We've connected an ECOP to cylinder one, and I'm going to leave channel two connected to the trigger. That gives us a reference for our measurements. Then is what we've done is we've connected an ECOP to cylinder four and to cylinder five. Now cylinder five, this one back here, that's our problematic cylinder. That's the one that shows a misfire. Now it looks like a new coil's on that. I didn't see that when I first started to work on the car. It was covered by the sound dampening for the high pressure fuel pump. Now what we need to do is to set the scope up so we can get these measurements. Let's do that. Now that we've got the ECOPS on the ignition coil, the ECOP is going to give us a capacitive coupling to the coil so we can get a waveform. To make the ECOPS work and to read right, we're going to need to set them up. So what we want to do is we want to go to the setup window and I want to go to the range and on each one of the channels where we have an ECOP, we want to pick that ECOP. Once we get the ECOP, I want to set the multiplier. Now the multiplier, that's going to tell me how big it's going to be, the signal. So I'm going to make it 30 times bigger than it is. That means that the signal is going to be larger. Then is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to come in and we want to zero these. That's going to zero the ECOPS. Now we're going to get some data. So we'll collect a little data and then we're going to take a look at what's going on with this vehicle. Now we've collected the data, let us turn our channels back on. Now these are our channels, we'll get a zoom window so we can see what's going on. And I can see that I've got two ECOPS but I don't have three. So what I want to do is I want to take one fire cycle. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn off these other channels and this is the trigger, right? So this is the trigger from one, cylinder one. Now I want to get the cursors and what I want to do is I want to put a cursor on each one of these and then I want to mark it for a six cylinder. Now we've got a marker. We're going to turn the yellow one on. That matched for one. We're going to put channel three on but that's for four. And then we want a five so we're going to turn five on. Now five doesn't have anything happening. That shows me that the ignition for number five coil, there's nothing there. That's why we're misfiring because the, there's no waveform. There's no magnetic intensity being built out of that coil to fire that plug. So what we need to do now is we're going to need to get into the control wire. This is a three wire coil, a power, a ground, and a signal. The signal turns on uh, a transistor, a MOSFET. That's a signal that's going to hit a gate and it's going to close the switch. The switch being the transistor. And it's going to turn on and allow current to build and that's the magnetic field. When we turn it off, the field falls and that puts a real high inductive kick into the coil that bridges the spark plug and makes plasma and the plasma takes the fuel stock past its auto ignition point. That is where we get the point of ignition and combustion. That's not happening on cylinder five, so we need to get in to see if those signals are there, power, ground, and signals at this point on five. Let's go ahead and connect. 
So we back probed cylinder five. Now we have a control to that coil. Let's see what's going on. Now we're into number five ignition coils trigger. What I need to do is set the scope up for that. So now we're going to we're going to go in and we're going to take this and we're going to put it at 500 volts. We're going to re-zero this. So now we're reading the the coil. Let's go ahead and we're going to start the data. We're going to stop the data. We're going to take our zoom window. We're going to come in with a zoom window. Again, we're going to zoom. Now, what we've got here, let's go ahead and mark this. Now here we can see that we fired number one. And let's turn this off. Do you see how big the control to the coil number one is? This is five. Do you see how small this is? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the grid real quick. We want to come in. Do you see how low this is and how high this is? I'm not having enough voltage output to that coil to fire it. Now my first thought is, is what's wrong? Is the coil pulling the signal down from the computer? Does the wiring have a problem or does the computer have a problem? Somewhere the voltage isn't being output high enough to actually turn on the base of the transistor so this coil can fire. What we need to do now is we need to test this circuit before we disconnect anything. I want to take the output driver from the e-scope and I want to put that signal into this coil. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do is I want to take this out and now I want to connect into the wiring harness. I'm going to need to be on the harness to feed the signal in so when I disconnect the different wires I can figure out what's wrong with the signal. So now we're into that wire. We want to set the e-scope up for the TTL out to drive the circuit. The e-scope can provide inputs and outputs for your diagnostics. We have a pull down out. That will sync power. So if this had a two wire coil, I could get into the control side and pull that down and release it and fire the coil. In this case, I also have an output. So I can feed a 5 volt output into this ignition coil. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and connect to the TTL out and let's check this circuit over. Now we need to set up the TTL out so we can drive these circuits. What we're going to do is we're going to go to outputs. This is a system to where the time units turns it on and off. That's going to turn it off in one second. The frequency, I'm going to drive the circuit at 100 hertz and I'm going to drive it at a 50% duty cycle. Now what I want to do is I want to take the one out and I want to put a zero there so it won't shut off. Now it will drive indefinitely. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this up and we're going to go over here and what I want to do is we want to test this signal. So I'm going to pull this lead out and I'm going to connect it. That's us driving the signal. So I'm driving that signal out. We're going to put this back on coil 5. And now what we need to do, when you have a coil driver, it will pull the circuit down because we're connected and a certain amount of this current is going to flow through the coil and the computer especially on the base of the transistor. So I need to test a good coil to see how high my voltage should be. To do that I'm going to come over to one and I'm going to touch one. Now we can see that we have about a volt. So I need about a volt on another circuit. That means cylinder 5's coil. So now we're going to go and we're going to touch cylinder 5's coil and we can see that it's being pulled down. I'm not able to generate a voltage. Now if I can't generate a voltage, neither can the computer. Now watch, I want to show you again. We're going to connect this to 5, I'm sorry, to channel 1. Now channel 1, I can see that signal, right? It's being pulled down from where we first had it, but that is normal for coil drivers. 
Now is what I want to do is I want to come over and I want to put it in five. Now I can see that we're pulled down. So now is what I need to do is I need to figure out where in the circuit this problem is. So I'm going to disconnect the coil first and if the coil is pulling it down it's going to come up to about a volt. If that doesn't happen then I'm going to release the connector off the computer and it should come up to about a volt. If it doesn't now the problem is in the harness. This is a way, a really quick way to test stuff to see if anybody's pulling the circuit down or the computer just has a problem. But this circuit is being pulled down. We know that because we can test cylinder 1's coil and I have about a volt. When I go to cylinder 5, the bad coil, I have nothing. That means it's got so much load pulling, I can't even generate a signal with our driver, the TTL out. So let's go ahead and unplug one end at a time while we watch the scope. Now we're going to disconnect the ignition coil. The circuit is still being pulled down, so it's not the ignition coil. Now let's look at the PCM. We've disconnected the ignition coil and we can see the circuit is still loaded. Now we need to disconnect the PCM. There you can see the signal went up. The PCM is pulling down that signal. The PCM is bad on this vehicle. Now that we've diagnosed this Ford Transit, let's go back and think about what we've done. We've done a test and we've looked at the data. Then we've done a next test based on that test data. Then we look at that data and we go to the next test. This is, a, is an event data driven method. The data is driving the next test. This is a way to be very successful in diagnosing any kind of system on, a, on an automobile or a vehicle. The sensor simulation is just something that works so well. That's why ATS scopes have a TTL out and a pull down in. That's because these type of circuit testing will give you great abilities to see where the problem actually is located. That way we don't replace the wrong part. When we can see which part is loading the circuit, whether it's the coil or the harness or the PCM, this is a very accurate way. If I release the coil and the and the driver comes up, the TTL circuit comes up, that's the problem. Something's wrong with the coil. If we release the PCM and it comes up, that's the problem. It's the PCM. If I release both ends and it still stays pulled down, that tells me the circuit is failing. This is a really great way to figure out exactly where the problem is without just hanging parts. If you follow these procedures and you use circuit simulators, you'll have great troubleshooting in your base.